very old recipe where you basically take uh, fruit, other ingredients from the garden, you combine them with sugar and vinegar. It's just that simple. It's just sugar, vinegar, and basically plant matter. And uh, shrubs are really fantastic. This is a very tart and sometimes almost bitter drink. A little bit of it in club soda is an amazing alternative to just like a soft drink. And they're being used more and more in cocktails. There's really a lot that you can do with this stuff and a lot that you can make yourself. But what I want to do now is make some actual drinks. So we have one thing going here, which is we have some tomatoes, basil, and pepper. I will talk about that in a minute, but I want to get one other drink going first, and that is cucumbers. Cucumbers are really only, only worth doing fresh. So I'm using these mason jars so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing, but also they're fun to drink out of. So they're sort of a multi-purpose cocktail tool, right? All right, slicing up some cucumbers. Adding to that some basil and some gin. Where's my gin? There we go. A word about serving sizes. It's a really good idea to get in the habit of measuring your pours if you don't. I just dumped all that vodka in there to, to get that going. But really, you want to measure. A cocktail jigger like this is one and a half ounces on one side and 0.75 ounces on the other, which happens to be the golden magical ratio for most cocktails, so that's no accident. So I'm just going to pour woo, an ounce and a half of gin in there. I'm so sorry y'all aren't getting to taste these. It really it does smell so good up here. Mwah. So all I'm going to do for the moment is I'm just going to muddle this up and let it sit. If you're making a drink with a lot of these kind of ingredients, a, a good thing to do rather than go to all the trouble to make infused vodkas is just to Get a drink going and let it sit for just a minute before you actually mix it up. And you're, most of the flavor extraction is going to happen. With something like cucumbers, you're not actually really extracting the flavor into the alcohol. You're just making cucumber juice. That's really all you're doing. Gin and cucumbers and basil and a little lemon juice. Important thing about all citrus juice, it gets bitter and oxidized and weird um, even a little bit after it's been squeezed. So you really want to squeeze things directly into the drink if at all possible. So bar tool number two that I love is this handheld citrus uh, squeezer. So I always use these. Not only do you get juice out of them, but you also get a lot of the oils from the rind, which is very nice. So get one of those. The other thing I'm going to add to this is Saint Germain elderflower liqueur. You guys know this, right? Everybody knows this. Of course you do. Saint Germain elderflower liqueur, lovely. You can, by the way, I'm sure many of you are growing elderflowers. You're growing Sambucus nigra or something in your garden. You can actually pick those flowers and make your own elderflower liqueur from it, or you could just go buy some Saint Germain. So uh, I did uh, one and a half ounces of gin. I need a half ounce, really, of St. Germain, so I'm going to take that 0.75 and just not fill it up all the way. And I'm just going to let all that sit and get happy for a minute. We're going to work on what I have going here. So I said vodka, basil, bell pepper. I would have put some cilantro in if I thought to get any. Um, celery is fantastic in this. I'm going to ground up a little celery, mash that up in there, and make sort of an incredibly fresh version of a Bloody Mary. So what happens here? Um, I mashed it all up in here so you can see it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the cocktail shaker. These shakers, if you're other bar tools that are great to have is a shaker like this. I'm about to show you how bad I am with this shaker. It's going to be pretty funny. I'm going to dump it all in here. Ice bucket, courtesy of the Sheridan next door. Thanks, guys, <laughs> for that. It's like, where do I get an ice bucket? And then I went back to my hotel room. I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Get it on there good and tight. It's the cold that makes the seal. So that's why the ice is important. If there was no ice in here, it would blow up all over me, and I would reek of gin for the rest of the day. So. Oh, shake it towards you so, you're, so it doesn't go out over your guests, right? You see? Towards me. If it blows up, it blows up on me. You don't really need fancy glasses for cocktails. I'm actually very fond of these kind of short tumblers for most drinks. 
little short glasses, very similar to the sort of thing you might see like in a Sheridan hotel. You know? <laughs> Just like that. Uh, these strainers are very handy. Um, now, sometimes you want to double strain a drink. I'll show you about that in a minute. I'm actually not going to double strain this. I like a lot of vegetative matter in my drink, so I'm just going to strain it with one strainer. But you can make a much cleaner drink. Oh, how beautiful is that? Doesn't that look good? Wow. I can garnish it with that. Hmm. Man, oh my god, oh, that is actually really good. <laughs> Woo! That is so good. Now, you can also, how are we doing on time? If you're gonna use, if you're gonna use tonic water, please buy good tonic water. Do not buy Schweppes, do not buy that awful stuff. It's high fructose corn syrup and artificial flavors. It's awful. Get Fever Tree or Q. These are made with real quinine. You will know that because when you take it home and put a black light on it, because I know you all have black lights at home, um, it'll glow in the dark. It glows because of these unstable molecules that fly around in quinine and give off uh, energy very restlessly. Anyway, get real tonic water. This stuff is uh, lovely and would be so, oh, so good in this. Man, this is fantastic. It's really Oh, that's so good. Now, I call that a blushing Mary. It's like a Bloody Mary, only just like a million times better. This drink, by the way, I call an herbarium because I need cute names for all my drinks. So all we've done is muddle up cucumbers, basil, and there's a little lemon juice, and there's that Saint Germain. So again, all we're gonna do, put this in here. No more ice. Next person who comes up here is gonna be like, what? What's going on here? It's a florist, I think, who's up next. And I think they're going to be kind of appalled. So once again, now, um, another thing about shaking and another thing about water and drinks, it's actually very good to get a little water in a drink. It, um, it actually improves the flavor. It doesn't dilute it. It actually makes it better. And uh, the reason is that some of those flavor molecules actually in the presence of water will want to clump together. You get a stronger, better flavor. That's why, for example, whiskey is, uh, actually tastes better with a little bit of ice. Even just one ice cube in whiskey is well worth it. So this drink, again, we have gin, we have cucumber, we have basil, we have Saint Germain, some lemon juice. Let me just check on this. Wow, that is awesome. It's a much sweeter, tartar drink. It's nice with some soda. So, that really is good. You know, I haven't had that much to eat today. I'm just now realizing. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe a little cucumber in there. A little basil for garnish would be nice. Oh, and I was going to show you a trick with a flower, so I will do it with this piece of cucumber. Flowers are great in cocktails, but you, what, do, what do you think they do when you drop them in a bunch of liquid? They just like wilt. They just fall apart. They don't do anything. So. Either a lemon slice or a cucumber slice is great for this. Just punch a hole in the middle of it if it doesn't already have a hole in the middle of it. And, right? Aww. Oh, look, I mean, people applaud when you do that. That's so cute. Mm. Those drinks are great. So, a couple other things. Great bar tools to have. Citrus zester, the kind with this little uh, blade thing in the handle. Can y'all all see that? You see what I'm talking about? I don't know why this took me so long to figure out. I was making terrible citrus peels for years, and I tried every different kind of citrus zester there was. Everyone was teasing me that I was going to get drunk up here and not be able to talk <laughs> by the end of it, and that's kind of what's happening, I guess. Uh, anyway, you can get really lovely long citrus peels with one of these, which I am sort of not doing because this thing is a little funky, but anyway, you really can, trust me, get nice, beautiful, long peels with, um, with one of these zesters. So that is well worth having. And then, I was going to double strain, and I forgot to double strain, but double straining basically means that you have a regular strainer for your cocktail shaker, but then you put a second strainer on there to strain it through, so you can get a much clearer, cleaner drink if you don't like lots of 
little bits and pieces floating around in your drink, which I love little bits and pieces floating around in my drink. Last, very vital bar tool for all of this. It's awesome to have one of these little funnels. It makes the work of pouring things into flasks much easier. <laughs> but, um, but all these little extractions and infusion and things, it's very useful to have that for um, measuring. A couple other things, little tricks that you will see bartenders do. Bartenders love to do this. They think they're so clever because someone told bartenders that all plants in the mint family, basil and mint and you know, sage and all that stuff, that they have a lot of oily uh, flavor molecules that are, or, or oily glands that are right on the outside of the leaf. And so if you want to get the flavor out of them, you should spank your herbs, right? So you just, you know, you just do that and then you set it in the drink. I think it's a little silly. I mean, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna mash it up either way. I think that's, it's probably nothing as precise as that. But if you wanna look super cool, if you're garnishing with a leaf, then you can stand there and spank your herbs as you put them in. <laughs> I don't know, would that be cool? Would that be good? I think it's probably good. Um, okay, so there's sort of a perfect ratio for um, cocktails uh, in, in the garden or not in the garden, but I have a page at the back of the book that's sort of a template for experimentation. And basically, it's an ounce and a half of whatever your hard liquor is, the gin or tequila or whatever. And it's a half ounce of whatever liqueur you might want to add to sort of liven it up. And, um, and then it's, you know, whatever fruit and herbs you're going to throw in. And if you want to, a couple ounces of tonic water or sparkling water or um, even sparkling wine. Uh, certainly for rum drinks, it's always nice to substitute the sparkling water for champagne and make a champagne mojito. So with that ratio, you can do just about um, anything uh, with plants from the garden. And I do suggest some. Uh, tequilas uh, tend to be great with things like watermelon and strawberries and other kinds of melons. Um, whiskey tends to be great with peaches and cherries and other stone fruit. And then gin, uh, vodka is great for savory stuff because vodka is basically flavorless. So anything you want to do with tomatoes and peppers and celery and all those savory flavors is great with vodka and gin goes with everything. That's, that's pretty much how that works.